excuse me. Good afternoon. We want to welcome you today to the homegoing of our dear, sweet friend, Ruth. And we're going to start with a word of prayer. I'm going to have my brother uh, Bill come on up, Bill Heath. Thank you, Brother Bill. And now at this time, we're going to have Ray uh, Remo is going to sing us a song and uh, accompanied by Mark Crawford. Are we ready? As long as life in 
endures through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we Bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. We've no days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds has their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known i'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of all his voice to me is calling and he walks with
with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever So much. What a beautiful song, amen? amen? In the garden. My mother used to sing that to me when I was a, just a little boy. And Ray would not let me anywhere near the choir. And my mother was worse than me. But it always tickled me when she would sing that song, In the Garden, what a joy. We need to make a joyful noise to the Lord, amen? And uh, also I want to mention that Bill said that back in the 1700s they would open in prayer for like 15 minutes. Well, as you all know from yesterday, I like scripture, so I like to read scripture. And in the Old Testament it says they read scripture for six hours, a fourth of the day. That means that we'll be here at about 7 or 8 o'clock tonight. Just kidding. But uh, at this time... We're going to have Jessica Light come up and read us some scripture. I once brought something really nice for Nana, and I brought it in elementary school. She made me promise to save it and share it with people, but in true Shoehart style, I lost it. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the scripture, and maybe it'll count. Um, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Thank you so much for that. At this time, if you'd like to say a word about our friend Ruth, I'm going to ask you if you would come forward, maybe one at a time. Uh, Nancy, are you going to say a word? Uh, you were there so often. Yeah. I remember going into her home when she was really at toward the end. And I was shocked because she had several ladies in there and she was entertaining them. <laughs> she was having a good time, wasn't she? Someone would like to say a word about uh, our friend Ruth. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Oh, come on up. Yeah, uh, yeah. By the way, we are on YouTube, so come on up. <laughs> we want the microphone. <laughs> Most people take them to the playground to sell 
Amen. Someone else like to say a word? Yes, right back here. Someone else like to say a word. Anyone else like to say a word? Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Um, I read this 
You want to come up? Someone else like to say a word? This is a blessing. Anyone else? Okay. Let's look at the Word of God. I will tell you this about Ruth before I get started. Matter of fact, I do want to read this. Uh, Dennis, this was really a blessing what you put together here, your obituary for mom. A loving mother and a friend to many, many. Ruth always enjoyed being with people and strove to make everyone feel welcome. She enjoyed life and many hobbies such as reading, entertaining, cooking, and at the top of the list we've heard shopping. Uh, she had a flair for decorating and design and an eye for beautiful accessories and jewelry. She will be greatly missed and never forgotten by all who knew her. Thank you. Uh, she always loved me telling jokes. <clears throat> I remember um, several that I had told her, but I will tell you this story. Um, there was a deacon and a head trustee at their church, and... Um, they decided they were going to go out hunting. And uh, they went out and, and pulled over where they were going to hunt, and uh, they both got their weapons out. And about the same time, a big buck came out in the middle of them, and uh, almost the middle of them. And they pulled their guns up, and they shot at the same time. About the same time, a game warden came by. And he said, who shot that buck? And they looked at each other and said, we don't know. And the game warden said, I can tell. And he went over and he looked at the buck and he said, the preacher shot him. And they looked at each other and said, how can you tell? He said, it went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> she would enjoy that. Uh, Genesis 25, verse 8, one of my favorite verses of those that have gone on. And Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man full of years, and was gathered unto his own people. What an amazing verse. Uh, imagine if we got to heaven and didn't know anybody. But in that verse, Abraham met up with his own people on the other side. Paul said, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. And then he also said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In 2 Corinthians, we read these verses. Uh, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh in us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight and glory. While we look not on things that are seen, but on things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. I especially like chapter 5, verse 1. It says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Verse 2 says, For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our new house, which is from heaven. Uh, the word earthly house in the Greek uh, means tent or temporary dwelling place. That's what these bodies are, just a tent or a temporary dwelling place. If I would ask Ruth today, what should I say 
There's no doubt I believe she would say, tell it like it is, preacher. C.S. Lewis said that God whispers to us in our joys, speaks to us in our difficulties, shouts to us in our pain, and pain is God's megaphone to arouse us to an all-out life for him. And death plants the flag of reality in the fortress of our hearts. There is no greater pain than losing a loved one. To the Christian, when we say goodbye down here, no doubt they're saying hello up there. I mentioned this yesterday. I said to Ruth, according to Scripture, there's no purgatory. And I'll never forget the look on her face. She said, no purgatory. And she was really excited. We are confident, the Bible says, and willing to be absent from this body and to be present with the Lord. It's another great verse. And I like this too, uh, Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to those with a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit or a crushed spirit. Whosoever, the Bible says, liveth and believeth in me, Jesus said, shall never die. The resurrection, by the way, I want to say, is not reconstruction. <clears throat> the dead body is the seed that is planted in the ground. The resurrected body is the flower that comes from that seed, brand new. Now, none of us know the heart of another. But in God's word, we see where he says, judge not lest thou be judged. He also said, he that is without sin cast the first stone. And we know that they all walked away. We don't know what people have been through down here, what disappointments or pain, but God does. And he, and we can see the heart of God in his word. So today I want to mention, first of all, God is a God of mercy. And mercy occurs 360 times in the Word of God. And it's one of His greatest qualities. It means full of compassion and forgiveness and love. Psalm 103.8 says, And the Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger. In the Gospels we see two blind men who cried out and said, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And Jesus healed them and saved them. In the Gospels, a dishonest tax collector beat on his chest saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said, this man went away justified before God. The thief on the cross, all he could say was, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said unto him, today you'll be with me in paradise. He recognized him as Lord. There is definitely a pattern here that I see. We call or cry out to him, and he answers. I remember my wife and I, who, my wife and I lost four children with a heart disease, all less than a year old. But I remember going into a church at Easter. I was 30 years old, and we didn't, weren't church people. And they prayed, and, uh, and I prayed my prayer. And I remember my prayer. It was 46 years ago. I said, Lord, I don't know what all these people are doing here. I don't know what I'm doing here. I've heard the story that you died on the cross for me. I believe it. I don't understand it. I wish you would show me what it's all about, and I'm not coming back. That's what I told the Lord. In other words, he'd have to catch me on the street someday. And I will tell you, he did just that. He answered that prayer, with, I know, with all my heart. And uh, through the death of our first boy, we uh, started to get in the scripture. And the second boy, we both got saved. And God has blessed us so much and given us an abundant life. The thief, the Bible says, cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. What a blessing. I want to say this. Job said that the Lord gave 
and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And God wants to use Ruth's life for his glory today. Point number one today we see is a God of mercy. Point number two we see is the God of the Bible. The Bible is absolute truth. It warns about hell, accurately predicts the future, and tells about heaven. Uh, when I think of my life, uh, my friends and I used to say, we're going to party in hell. That was the dumbest thing after getting in the Bible I think we've ever said. But the Bible tells me that hell is a bottomless pit. Somebody got their phone on? I'm just, that's all right. It's usually mine, that's why I'm asking. Okay. Hell is a bottomless pit. It's a place of total darkness. Hell is a lake of fire. Deuteronomy says their stomachs will burn with hunger, someone that dies without the Lord. There's no music there. There's no cell phones. No t I didn't mean that. I really to come out that way. No TVs. Without Jesus, we would go there forever. In John 3.17, I used to think God was angry with me. But John 3.17 says, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Years ago, I preached the funeral of a six-year-old boy. He had fell off the back of his dad's cabin cruiser. And they didn't find him for several days. You would say, what an awful accident. Actually, it was an appointment. An elderly woman stepped out of her car thinking she had a flat tire. And uh, she was hit by a passerby and killed. Surely an accident. No, according to God's word, it was an appointment. I preached several so-called accidents, all of good people on motorcycles. Accidents, appointments, not accidents. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. We have an appointment. We all have an appointment with God. Uh, you say, Pastor, can I believe the Bible? I'd like to prove it to you in just a few verses. Daniel 12.4, written 2,550 years ago. And the Lord said to Daniel, Shut up the words, seal the book till the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Written 2,550 years ago. I remember reading about a patent office uh, back in the 1800s. And somebody went in and said, we're going to shut this place down. Because there's nothing left to be invented. Look what's happened since then. Um, we go into Walmart uh, or Macy's and we uh, put everything up on the counter and, uh, and they scan it. And then we pull out a credit card or something and scan that credit card. Uh, and the Bible says, when I think of that, I think of these verses. Knowledge will increase. And they're trying now in several places, areas, they're putting a number in your hand or in your forehead. And so instead of fumbling for a credit card, they just, you scan your hand, it makes it real easy. Just like God said, knowledge would increase. Uh, I was, uh, think of a man was on a horse or a camel for years. And then about 150 years ago, the automobile was invented. Dr. Shapiro, the head cardiologist at Children's Hospital, said, Marvin, every time we go to print with our findings, it's already outdated before it gets back from the printer. Wow. How many people in here remember the first black and white TV? Can I see your hand? Boy, that's an old group here. Huh? <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, how about, uh, I remember the first TV on our block. And... Uh, the guy didn't have any friends, but after he got his TV, we were all his friends. 
Uh, you remember back in those days, the Shanklins, I'm talking to the young lady back here, grew up on our street. Uh, how many people remember I Love Lucy? One of you, okay. How about Howdy Doody? I just love saying that name. I, how about Sanford and Son? That guy was crazy. Carol Burnett. You remember Sky King? Yes. You were really old, buddy. All right. <laughs> How about comic books? Dick Tracy. Does anybody remember Dick Tracy? Yeah. You know what I liked about Dick Tracy? He had a two-way wristwatch. This is back in the 50s. He could talk on that thing. And I thought, that will never happen. Well, look what's happened. You can have more than a wristwatch, a two-way watch on it, or a, a, a two-way uh, microphone there, whatever you call it. Um, they have everything today. You can have a computer on your, on your wrist. Matter of fact, th what's real popular now is, is uh, you can check your temperature, your blood pressure, your, your uh, blood sugar. You can see if you're alive, alive or dead even. I mean, it's amazing. Look at what's happened in our lifetime. In 1967, I was in the Army, and they lost my file. And in 1967, the computer was invented. And uh, that's amazing. They still don't know who I am. I will tell you that. How about, um, let me give you a good verse. Uh, Psalm 139. The Bible says that his thoughts of you, not your neighbor, his thoughts of you are more than the sand. Now, if you imagine going to Ocean City and getting a sand bucket and packing it full of sand, this is an experiment I want you to run. Go home, empty the sand on your kitchen table, and count every grain. And then imagine if you could do that to Myrtle Beach and the pink sands of Bermuda and Ocean City. If you could count every grain, you'd just be getting started at seeing how much his thoughts of you are. Somebody loves you today. Can I get one more amen? amen? Technology. Look at the scanners. Look at um, uh, Revelation 13, 16, I meant to give you earlier. Written 2,000 years ago. It says, he causeth both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, prophesied. 2,000 years ago, that no man might buy or sell save he have the mark. Praise God. God's word is truth. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I'm thankful for all the scriptures about heaven. John 14, 6. Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. How do we make sure heaven's our home? I will tell you this, your good works will not get you to heaven. Ephesians tells us not by works, lest any man should boast. And we all owe a sin debt that we cannot pay. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, which I really love, says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Heaven is a free gift. No one deserves it. Heaven, how do we get there? I remember thinking after we lost our second boy, I thought, I'll join a church. And then I looked, and there was churches on every corner. I thought, which one do I join? But it's not about church. I thought, I'll keep the Ten Commandments. And then when I saw them, I thought, hey, I've broken some of these. Is there any hope for me? Then I thought, I'll be religious. I thought, no, I can't be religious. But I've discovered that by trusting Jesus 100%, you can know for sure heaven is your home. Realize the seriousness of your sin. 
If just one sin of ours was not paid for at Calvary's cross, we would spend all eternity in hell trying to pay for it. One sin. But John 10.10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with our mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10.13 Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Remember earlier I was telling you about all those people that called on the Lord or cried out to the Lord and God saved them. And you can be saved today. Don't let Ruth's life be in vain. Your only chance to ever see her is through Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. Would you call on Jesus today? When you call on the Lord Jesus and ask him to forgive you, and save you, the Bible says that you become born again and God the Holy Spirit comes to live on the inside. And the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter. I tell you what, we can make it through a whole lot of things with the Comforter. When we, years ago, we, uh, we were right in the middle of the tornado that hit here, La Plata, and we lived out on 231 and the tornado went right down through 231 and it hit our house head on. And um, I remember uh, I was trying to get home, and the roads were blocked for trees and fires. And the policeman came up to me and said, which house is yours? And I told him, right on 231, a new one right on the corner. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. He said, the back half of your house is missing, and they're looking for two little girls. Our two granddaughters lived in the basement. So when I finally got to the house, um, I got a call from my wife and she said, uh, uh, Marvin, the two girls and their mama were at the mall shopping. We thought they had been pulled out and swept away. But the Lord, when I was running to the house, there were several verses that came to my mind that God has given me comfort and strength from. One was uh, Romans 8.28, that all things work together for the good, for those that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Not all things are good, but all things work together for the good. And, uh, and I said, Lord, that, help, that verse has helped me before, but it didn't help me today. Give me another one. And I had uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks. Uh, there's so many amazing verses came to me and comforted me. Uh, since I've become a Christian, born again, God the Holy Spirit, the comforters on the inside, I remember getting ready to go into my house and uh, <clears throat> I thought these people are going to think I'm crazy. I have such a peace about where, you know, what God was doing, I didn't know. But I'd called on him several years before, and he changed me. Three key words to get us to heaven. Jesus, save me. It's not complicated. Admit we're all sinners. Believe on the Lord Jesus only, and call on his name, the ABCs of the gospel. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you've never called on Jesus and asked him to save you, I would encourage you to do that today. I'd like to lead you in a simple prayer if you've never asked Jesus to forgive you and save you. Between you and God, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me of my sins. Take me to heaven someday. In your name, Lord Jesus, I ask these things. Help me to live for you. Help me to get into your word. Help me to find a good church. In your name, Lord Jesus, I ask these things. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm just curious if someone here has asked Jesus to save you today. Would you slip your hand up and put it down? Nobody looking. 
Amen. I see that hand there, there, over there. Anybody else? Over there. Anybody else? Praise God. Anybody else? I've asked Jesus to save me today. Praise the Lord. Lord, we're thankful for Ruth. And I'm so thankful for the promises that we will see her again someday in her new glorified body. What a day that's going to be. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving us your word. In your name we ask these things. Amen. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask you all to come up and, and maybe comfort the family at this time. And do we have more instruction? At the clubhouse where she lived? Williamsburg Circle. Williamsburg Circle, right up behind uh, Pepsi. Yeah, just down the street from where she lived. Yeah. All right, so let's stand and, uh, and uh, let's uh, close with a word of prayer and then you all come up and greet the family. And then we're going to head over to the, uh, uh, for the food. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the day and we thank you for our sister. We look forward to seeing her again. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen. Thank you all so much. All right. Carol, you have a blessing.